So what purpose does production casing serve? When does it get installed? And what does it have to do with production tubing? Stay tuned because we're about to give you the quick rundown on the basics of casing and tubing in oil and gas wells. Thanks for joining us for another Oilfield Basics video blog. My name is Derek Craig and we here at Oilfield Basics are trying to build the go-to educational platform for education in our industry. And there's so many awesome topics like this that we, are, we have to cover for you guys. And if you like what we're doing or find this video helpful, please be sure to share it. Share it with somebody who could find use of the material. Subscribe, comment, follow us on all of our social media. It'll mean the world to us. So anyways, let's dive in. All right, so let's first get the basics down pat. When the reeling rig arrives on location, it has one goal, which is to create a wellbore to and through the target formation as designed by the drilling engineer. So many times the end of the well, or TD, will be thousands and thousands of feet away from the surface. Thus, as you can imagine, one continuous wellbore cannot be drilled that entire distance. Less consolidated or loose rock at the surface could easily cave in. Meanwhile, high pressure formations deeper in the well could begin trying to flow. Also, we want our drinking water protected, right? So this is why we set multiple strings of steel pipe called casing. And these are inserted in the well every so often. So the rig will drill down to the predetermined depth by the drilling engineer. We'll bring the bit back to surface and then lower casing that's just a little smaller than the open hole diameter into the well. Cement is then pumped down the inside of the casing and then is displaced into the outside of the casing with a wiper plug. Now that section of the wellbore is then isolated and protected from any outside forces or fluids, etc. And once this casing has been installed and cemented, the rig will then continue drilling with a smaller sized bit until they reach TD or need to install the next casing string. This last string of casing that is installed is going to be called the production casing. This casing string is installed throughout the entire production or pay zone of that well. And typically it is also cemented into place so that the completions or hydraulic fracturing treatment will be effective. And during fracking operations, the production casing is then perforated, which allows the producing formation to be able to flow its hydrocarbons into the well bore. And now the well will be ready to begin producing. Now please understand that the hydrocarbons flow from the reservoir into the well bore due to a pressure difference. And since this well bore is at a lower pressure than the formation, the hydrocarbons will flow into it and then will subsequently flow to the surface. And again, because the surface pressure is lower than the bottom hole pressure near the perforations. However, once the reservoir pressure decreases, it will not be able to successfully lift the liquids to the surface as easily because the pressure difference will be less. So this is because the production casing is about four and a half inches or five and a half inches wide, which is way too large a diameter to be able to produce through because you won't be able to lift it at the critical velocity or flow rate, which will be required to transport all of the liquids to the surface. And this is why we install production tubing. This is a well-known method of solving this problem. And production tubing is typically anywhere from one and seven eighths inch to two and seven eighths inch of diameter. And this is literally a string of tubing that is lowered into the well by a workover rig later in the well's life. Some companies even just install production tubing before they begin producing the well so that it won't lose its ability to lift fluid naturally as soon. And if that seems too complex, just picture blowing through a straw. You'll remove liquid in the straw more efficiently if the straw is a smaller diameter compared to one that is a large diameter. It's gonna be much harder to blow the liquid out of the bigger straw. And this is the same thing with the reservoir. Now let's quickly look at this wellbore schematic. So we've got production casing in the well and we've also got production tubing in the well. And typically when production tubing is installed in a well, it's especially in a horizontal well, typically they will only run it to about the kickoff point or somewhere in the curve going into the lateral. Now once tubing is installed in a well, typically operators are not going to be producing from the casing side of the well. They are typically just going to be producing through the tubing. One exception to that might be when you've got artificial lift in the hole, such as rod lift or a pump jack, because nearly every form of artificial lift is going to require production tubing in the hole. Typically, you might also, some operators will then prefer to also be able to produce gas from the annulus side of the well, which would be the casing. But most of the production, however, is going to be coming through your tubing, if not all of it, which will be being produced through your casing tree, as opposed to anything coming out of your casing wing valves on the wellhead. And now note that the space between the inside of the production casing and the outside of the tubing, that space is what we call the annulus. So if someone says that the well is producing from the annulus, they mean that it's being produced through the production casing. 
that infers that the annulus is open. Some companies might utilize packers and seal off the backside or annulus of the well for a few different reasons. And that's a whole other video for a whole other time, but just realize that this could be a scenario that you could run into. And this type of setup is common among injection wells, which again is a whole other video in and of itself. All right, so hopefully this video helped clear up the distinction between casing and tubing in a typical producing horizontal well. And if you wanna learn more about well design or drilling ops or production equipment and more, be sure to check out our courses at oilfieldbasics.com learn. And be sure to share this video, give it a thumbs up, like it on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, follow us on all of our social media platforms, and we'll be sure to see you in the next video. Thanks.